What's up guys, Paramoto here. Today I want to talk about the Panigale V4 and how we got here. Please make sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button down below, let's get to it. With the recent release of the V4 and most recently the V4R, I wanted to do a video history of the modern Ducati Superbike. This isn't intended to be a history of Ducati as a company, that's best left for another video. I want to bring you guys a history of the bikes that I personally fell in love with, and those are Ducati Superbikes. Ducati's initiation in the superbike world would arguably start in the 1970s. Prior to this, Ducati mainly catered to the Italian market, which did include some minor racing, but most of their motorcycles were single cylinder machines that were too far removed from the twin cylinder beast we would all fall in love with later on to mention here. On March 20, 1970, the first sketches were made for the layout of the new Ducati V-Twin. The company introduced the 500 and 750 GP V-Twin motorcycles, which would help define the company's approach to racing and would lay the groundwork for what would eventually turn into production superbikes. These bikes include the 750 Amola Desmo and the Absolute Cafe Classic Ducati 860 GT. I can actually hear the drool hitting the ground from the cafe crowd after seeing this beautiful 860 GT. In the 1980s, along with being the decade I was born, thanks mom, Ducati introduced the 90 degree V-twin liquid cool bikes that were fully fared. And in 1987, Ducati introduced the 851. With a blistering 93 advertised horsepower and Brembo brakes, Ducati's 851 was also the first Ducati to have computerized fuel injection and liquid cooling. This was probably the first truly modern Ducati superbike. And although these bikes look very dated now, you can directly trace back the lineage of every Ducati superbike made for the next 20 years to these bikes. Following Ducati's tendencies to bore out an existing engine and re-release the power plant along with minor changes to the overall motorcycle, Ducati followed up the 851 with the 888 in 1991. The 888 won World Superbike in 1991 and 1992. Following Ducati's defeat to Kawasaki in 1993, the 888 was discontinued. Following continued refinement of the platform and complete outward redesign of the Ducati Superbike, the 916 was released in 1994. Now we're getting somewhere. With a top speed of almost 160 miles an hour, a single-sided swing arm, and dual undertail exhaust, the 916 and a smaller counterpart, the 748, were truly an early Ducati Superbike. Ducati was starting to get in the swing of modern performance and design. Ducati won four World Superbike Championships with the 916. Keeping most of the key design elements, Ducati released the Ducati 996 in 1999. The 996 further refined the earlier 916 platform. The 996 smoothed out the design and provided more horsepower than the 916. The 996 came in three levels of trim, base, SPS, and R. R obviously being the race designation. The models came with increasingly sophisticated components and increasing weight savings. In 2002, Ducati released the last of the motorcycles considered to be on the 916 platform, with the 998. Considered to be the final version of the 916, although similar looking to its predecessors, the 998 introduced the Testa Stretta engine. The Testa Stretta engine was a complete redesign of the 916 Desmo Quadro engine from the crankshaft up. Along with making 123 horsepower and being featured in the Matrix Reloaded, a 996 with a 998 engine won World Superbike in 2002. Now on to one of the most controversial bikes that has ever been made. The Ducati 999. The Ducati 999 was produced for only three years, being 2003 to 2006. The Ducati 999 was only the second full cosmetic redesign on the list, and this one definitely caused a stir. With its lack of single sided swing arm and odd headlight configuration, many people did not like the looks of this bike when it first came out. But with its three World Superbike Championships and its 145 horsepower in the R version, it established itself as the fastest Ducati yet, being able to reach 170 miles per hour silencing the credits at least somewhat. Ducati quickly moved away from the design of the 999 and returned to a more traditional look for its successor. The 1098 was released by Ducati in 2007. The 1098 is the third full makeover for Ducati sport bikes since the A51. It returned to a more traditional Ducati Superbike look and a lot of design elements from the loved 916 platform were reintroduced, such as the horizontal headlights, undertail exhaust, and single sided swing arm. Many people welcomed the change in design, especially the critics of the 999. The 1098 came in familiar trim models, such as the base S and R. The R model coming with a wet weight of 439 pounds and 180 horsepower. At the time of its release, these figures gave the 1098R the highest torque to weight ratio of any production sport bike ever made. Ducati won World Superbike titles in 2008 and 2011. The 1098 was produced from 2007 to 2009 when after rule changes made by World Superbike, allowing the use of 1200cc bikes, Ducati decided to upgrade its current production bike. The Ducati 1198 was introduced in 2009. The 1198 carried over much of the design and performance figures from the 1098, including the much-loved single-sided swing arm that Ducati fans demanded after the design flop which was the 999. The 1198 came in the same base S and R models as the 1098. 
The 1098 and 1198 are so similar, I almost considered combining both bikes and talking about them as if they were simply different models of the same motorcycle. And now we're getting to the part of the video that most of you guys have probably been waiting for. At the 2011 Milan Motorcycle Show, Ducati released the 1199 Panigale. This is the first motorcycle I've mentioned that actually wears the Panigale badge. At 419 pounds wet and acclaimed 195 horsepower, Ducati released the 1199 as the most powerful production sport bike ever produced. This was one of the first production superbikes to have fully electronic adjustable suspension. The bike would also go on to, as his predecessors did, win over critics such as MCN and Road Track due to his ridiculous performance and stunning looks. Ducati finished second in 2015 and 2017 in the World Superbike with the 1199. The 1199 came in the standard trims that Ducati was producing up to that time, base, S, and R. Not wanting the R models, ridiculous 195 horsepower or 202 mile per hour top speed to be the height of its new model, Ducati released something totally new which we hadn't seen before. Ducati introduced the Panigale 1199 Super Leggera. With its outstanding price tag of $65,000 USD, that's right, $65,000 for a motorcycle. The Super Leggera used carbon fiber, a magnesium monocoque frame, and liberal use of titanium to reach a ridiculous 390 pounds in road-ready form. The Ducati Panigale 1199 was produced from 2012 to 2014 when its bigger brother was introduced, the 1299. The 1299 cleaned up some of the design elements but stayed mostly true to the 1199 form. The 1299 came with a new generation of electronics, such as the new semi-active Olin Smart EC suspension. If you thought the 1199 Super Leggera was ridiculous, the 1299 Super Leggera took it to a whole new level. The 1299 Super Leggera, coming in at a whopping $70,000 USD, boasting even more performance than its predecessor, the 1299 Super Leggera weighed in a measly 368 pounds in road-ready form and made a mind-boggling 215 horsepower. The final edition of the 1299 is still available today, but not for very long. And now for the main event. The Ducati Panigale V4. Being introduced in 2018, the Ducati Panigale V4 is the first bike from Ducati with a V4 engine in it meant for mass production. There was a very short run of V4 Desmo Sedici motorcycles made from 2007 to 2008, but we won't go there quite yet. Breaking years of tradition, as the manufacturer was known for its torque happy L twin motorcycles, the V4 comes with a total redesign. Killing the 1199 platform of motorcycles after seven years, the V4 is almost a total redesign from ground up. The V4 returns to a more traditional frame, moving away from the 1199 and 1299 which had the engine as a main structural component of the motorcycle. The V4 Panigale, as the name suggests, comes with an about 1100cc V4 engine with a counter-rotating crankshaft, which means the engine rotates in the opposite direction as the wheels. This decreases the force needed to change the bike's direction, which means even though the bike is wider than the 1299, it flicks from side to side in corners like a smaller motorcycle. The V4 comes in a familiar level of trims with one new designation. The V4 was released with base, S, and S Speciale models. The S and Speciale come with Olin suspension standard, and the Speciale has slightly more horsepower and comes with a few extras that you don't get on the base model, such as a racing fuel cap. Released in SEMA 2018, the V4R model comes as close as you can get to owning a piece, a world superbike. The V4R uses a World Superbike compliant 998cc engine, making it claim 217 horsepower. Yes, that means the R model has the smallest engine out of the Panigale V4s. And also, winglets? Because, why not, I guess. Retailing at $40,000, it is the top of the line most current Ducati you can own to date. With no plans for a Super Leggera model announced as of February 2019, it is likely to stay top dog for at least the time being. Hey guys, Paramoto here. Thanks for watching my first narrated video I put on this channel. If this video does well, I might do something called like a crash course bike series going forward and just document different bikes, different models, different manufacturers, and stuff that you guys might want to hear about. Um, thanks for watching again. Please make sure to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces.